Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and I'm back with the sun, moon, rising combination videos. Yes, some people have booked their video and this one is for Michael J. Michael J, thank you very, very much for helping me produce this video. Blessed be, many, many blessings to you. So let us begin. His combination is Scorpio rising, which incidentally I did plan to start the next series with Scorpio rising. So see how it's, it's such a synchronicity. So we've got a uh, Scorpio rising with a moon in the 12th house Libra and with a sun in the 8th house in Gemini. So uh, first let us try and understand a bit about the sun. So the sun is, it illuminates, it's the most glorious part of the solar system. I mean, we survive, we are here because of the sun. So where you have the sun, the sun brings illumination. The sun shows what kind of a leader you are. The sun is the reason you incarnate. So you have a sun in Gemini. Now, Gemini is masculine, sun is masculine, so goes well. Sun is fire, Gemini is air, goes well too, it's a sextile formation. Uh, but there's a concept of accidental debility because of that sun being in the eighth house. Okay, so eighth house is very platonic. It is the realm of Scorpio. So see how your chart is incidentally very Scorpionic. Having that emphasis on the 12th house as well because 12th house is the natural home of Pisces, the third of the water triplicity and Scorpio being the second of the water triplicity. So uh, your Mars placement, Michael J, and anybody with this combination is the key to solving the puzzle of your natal chart. So you must understand the placement of Mars, whether you have a day chart or a night chart, because Mars is a nocturnal planet, so Mars does well in a night chart. So there are many things to that, but let us understand now the sun in Gemini. So Gemini is the third natural house of the zodiac. The third house deals with siblings, short distance travel, school education, um, and you know, writing, blogging, yeah, the blogs you visit every day, the programs you watch are possibly very uh, third house, okay? So third house is where the moon has planetary joy. So you know, that's, that's also pretty interesting, but Scorpio rising, and, and that, uh, and that uh, sun in Gemini, there is a quincunx formation between these two signs, or an in conjunct. Okay, this happens five signs apart, and it's a very intense, brooding kind of uh, formation, this quincunx aspect, and it always prompts to crisis. So son in the eighth house, father may have, you know, not been around, a father definitely has secrets. Uh, Gemini, oftentimes, Sun in Gemini, people are uh, either, you know, working in entertainment because of the writing, blogging, vlogging part, or, you know, even office work. So a lot of things are significations of Mercury because Mercury being uh, the closest to the solar logos because Mercury travels closest with the Sun always except when it's retrograde and then it has a superior and an inferior conjunction. There it's Kazimi and it's uh, bathed in the solar logo. So for you, Mercury retrogrades are going to be interesting for anybody with this placement with that eighth house sun in Gemini. Sun in Gemini needs grounding. Gemini is mutable air. Okay, it's a uh, domicile ruler is uh, Mercury. So again, the placement of Mercury is going to determine what is happening with uh, your incarnation this time, how you shine, how you lead. So there are also some very interesting fixed stars uh, in Gemini. So that's also something to look for uh, when you're looking at your nature chart. So now the sun in Gemini in the 8th house could work with secrets. Even if you are a writer, you could write about horror, you could write about, uh, you know, debt. 8th house is a realm of debt, taxes. So even an accountant is very possible with sun in Gemini in the 8th house. 
you know, and that Scorpio rising, but you've got that very plutonic, very uh, Martian energy coming through. Mars being the traditional ruler of Scorpio, it's, it's about stealth, because here Mars expresses himself through yin energy, okay, through fixed uh, water. So fixed water is almost like ice. So there's a lot of stealth to a Scorpio rising, a lot of secrets, a lot of trauma, because again, that Aquarius happens to be your fourth house of family and foundations, and it's a very eccentric uh, placement for family and foundation. So now, and also you have that moon in Libra in the 12th house. So 12th house is the house of self-sabotage. It's a house of incarceration, addiction. So the moon is a signification of your mother. Of, of your emotions, your moods, your, you know, uh, your psychic understanding, your ESP. The moon is the embodiment of your personal mysteries. So the sun and the moon are known as lights. So your moon is ruled by Venus. Now, interestingly, the moon, uh, Libra is a masculine sign, the moon is feminine. The moon is cold and moist. The commonality here is Libra being an air sign is moist. So there's this uh, fertile energy with that moon in the 12th house. If you are not into addiction, if you've learned how to balance this 12th house energy of endings and new beginnings incessantly, then you know that you are very connected to spiritual development and psychic understanding and possibly even working with people and helping them out. With the moon in Libra, uh, in uh, Libra is not again a very dignified position because uh, the moon seems to be very scattered in Libra. But again, once you look deep, you see that Libra is the domicile of Venus, and Venus rules also Taurus, where the moon is exalted. So both these are the feminine archetypes, and they're both cold and moist. So there is uh, an interesting connection of the moon to Libra because of this affi uh, affinity with Venus, okay? And the uh, moon having her exaltation in the domicile of Venus. So there's definitely artistry with this because, you know, a Libra moon is uh, very beautiful, very beautiful in its understanding of the way, you know, uh, you look possibly. Also your surroundings. Now the 12th house being such a, uh, it's where Saturn has planetary joy, by the way. So it's a place where, uh, you know, it's in Hellenistic astrology, it's known as the place of evil spirits. There's a lot of psychic, uh, you know, interference in the 12th house. This is the culmination of the zodiacal wheel. So Pisces is always associated with endings and the 12th house is always associated with endings. So having your moon in the 12th house, you could be, you know, in a sense, uh, very addicted to tragedy or sad songs or just like really vintage sort of romantic. And of course, your ideas of romance are absolutely untenable. So uh, because Libra itself is about us, because Aries being its polarity is about me. And because Libra is, a, is about us, having your moon, which is your emotional fluidity in a sign, which is about us, then you tend to always focus on the us and you become a people pleaser. You become a pushover. So, you know, you're just ready to keep the peace. You're ready to say anything to, you know, not fight. Because Libra moon and Libra by itself can be very wasteful. It's an energy that always is seeking to bring equilibrium. But there is no equilibrium to be had. So oftentimes the pursuit of Libra becomes a fallacy. And according to esoteric astrology, the moon sign becomes our biggest, you know, block to enlightenment because it deals with all the habits that we form. The moon, moon is a signification of our daily habits. Okay, of um, our uh, emotions, of how we uh, perceive love, who we need in our relationship. Okay, 
So having said that, this is definitely a very psychic placement for the moon, a very spiritual place, a place that is very, you're very emotionally connected to your ancestors, to a faraway place of fantasy and role play, because again, the Libra is very, very much into role play and fantasy. And having a Venus being the domicile ruler of Libra and Libra being a part of their triplicity, it's, it's about ideas, it's about harmony. You know, Taurus is the more earthy domicile of Venus, but in Libra, Venus is uh, Venus Urania. She's cerebral, not so visceral as in Taurus. So the energy is very different when we, um, you know, compare the two domiciles of Venus. And then where is Venus exalted? In Pisces. And you have that moon in Pisces. So it's, it's like your relationships are always, in a sense, you know, uh, the reason of your undoing, self-sabotage. Okay, so you either cannot connect or if you connect, you suddenly connect and then it becomes too much and the person moves away. Or you uh, connect because with intoxicants. Moon in Libra and the 12th house, a very, very uh, strong predilection for intoxicants. Getting inebriated because Pisces being the energy of culmination and uh, fantasy and, you know, myth making. It's a place where... It's after all Jupiter's domicile. Jupiter expresses himself through yin mutable water in Pisces. It's a very fertile sign next only to Cancer. So you know you've been talking about Pisces to understand your 12th house Libra moon because it is drawing from that 12th house energy. So uh, now, ascendant in Scorpio, very deep brooding eyes. Okay, violence is definitely something you've got to think of because uh, your ascendant to moon is a, is a quincunx, which is again a very difficult energy to balance. So the relationship with your father may not be, you know, what you expected. Because of that Gemini 8th house debilitated sun. So in a sense also working uh, in the world and expressing yourself could be more difficult with that 8th house uh, sun, you know. It's, it's called, the 8th house in Hellenistic astrology is called idol, okay. And, and in a sense it's not so idle because it de deals with death and regeneration. To deep processes, it's the natural home of Scorpio. So you are a Scorpio rising with the sun in the 8th house drawing that very deep plutonic energy so you definitely uh, play with symbology in your mind interest in the occult interest in, in astrology so you know looking at uh, of course your mercury will tell you much more about your sun looking at uh, your uh, venus will tell you more about the moon you know and uh, of course looking at Mars and then discovering what Mars is doing is going to be the key to unlocking your destiny. Okay, the natal chart has all the answers. It's, it's a not so cryptic puzzle given to us but we need to learn the language. So that is the, you know, the call of Aquarius because astrology is after all ruled by Aqu Aquarius and Uranus. So, a uh, very creative energy though, because you've got that moon in Libra. So, working in uh, beauty or, you know, even garments, there'll always be a fantasy play if you're a designer. There are many people with Libra moons who are models or designers, just in the entertainment world as actors or, you know, even in the, world, the realm of finance because it's Venusian. But you need a lot of grounding with those emotions and you need to find a healthy outlet to look at the ugly side of life. I mean, I'm sure you've had enough practice with the Scorpio rising, but you know, the Libra moon tends to push it under the carpet and then your rising and your uh, moon may possibly be a sextile, semi-sextile. 
So that could create a, a huge friction between, you know, literally the ascendant is how you've come into being in this 3D world. It's how you look, how you interact with people. So, you know, having a Scorpio rising, you're definitely very subversive because Mars works in a very stealthy, subversive way in Scorpio. Of course, you need to see if it's a day chart or a night chart. You know, the position of Mars will tell you how uh, to function in the world. And look, Mars is literally action. So the right action will only come once you understand the significations of Mars in your natal chart. I hope you liked that video. Thank you so much for helping me produce this and giving me the uh, push, the drive to get back on this. Uh, please come out and help me more. And uh, $11, 11 is not a big deal of money. It's a minuscule amount to help an independent artist like me produce spiritual content for you. So kindly go ahead and drop me an email. Thank you so much. See you soon.